Hello everyone, Justin DeLay from Reverb.com, and we are back with another episode of Intro to Synthesis. Today, we're taking a closer look at filters. So, if the oscillator is the core of your synthesizer sound, the filter is what is going to shape that sound and give it the character that you're looking for when you're making your sounds. So, let's dive right in. Here, is what a low-pass filter sounds like. Right away, what we hear is that on a filter, when you are lowering the cutoff frequency, you're making your sound duller. Again, bright signal, making it duller. You can see when you look at the, the, the frequency spectrum, you can see that, that high end being slowly cut out as we shape the filter. Okay, so we took a look with the frequency analyzer as to what the filter is doing across the sonic spectrum, but it's also really interesting to look at what a filter is doing to the waveform. So we're gonna start off open filter, saw wave, and as we sweep out all those high frequencies and those, those harmonics, you'll see the wave become more and more and more like a sine wave over time as we filter down just to the, the, the basic, the, the fundamental frequency of your sound. And that looks like this. A filter by itself, maybe not the most exciting sound in the world, but it's when you start to add shape to the filter and modulation that really interesting sounds emerge. So one of the first features that you're going to want to explore on your synth's filter is its resonance. And what resonance is, is a way to accentuate the frequencies right at the cutoff point of your filter. So if here is our sound spectrum, and these are low frequencies and these are high frequencies, and we're looking at a low pass filter, the, the, the filter as you sweep the cutoff is gonna slowly cut off the high end. What resonance does is it puts a, a peak, a notch, right at the tip, right at the top of your, your filter cutoff. And what that does is it creates a sharpness and uh, uh, can be a very nasal quality as you increase the resonance. And as you go further and further, you get some of those laser zaps and really um, focus sounds that you've heard over and over again from synthesizers, and it sounds like this. Medium cutoff, no resonance. And we're gonna start to raise up the resonance. Now you can hear it almost get to like a singing quality there, and, and one thing to keep in mind, as resonance goes up, it starts to get um, a lot of synths, a little bit more out of control, which can be really cool, but generally speaking, you know, resonance is gonna be sort of in the medium range of your knob. Let's turn up the resonance and then sweep the filter, and you can look and you can see on the frequency analysis, you'll see that peak in the sound, and you can see it sweeping through the spectrum. So even if you don't understand all the particulars of frequency analysis or waveform visualization, this is what's important to keep in mind. A synthesizer is going to create a huge amount of sound. Even when you're playing one note, you're going to be creating a bunch of upper order uh, harmonics and frequency content that's going to give a very, very rich sound. As you filter down, you're focusing more and more of that synthesizer sound on that root note that you're playing. So far, we've taken a look at a pretty static example here, playing a note and filtering it, but half the fun of a synthesizer is to constantly be changing things, constantly be shaping the sound in real time. So how would we do that on a synthesizer? Well. The easiest thing to do is to just use your hand to sweep the filter. So check this out. 
Kind of got that wah vibe. But where things get really, really fun is in thinking about automating, uh, without twiddling the knobs, those same types of movements of the filter. And now we start to take a look at modulation of the filter. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at key tracking. As you play up the keyboard, as you play higher notes, if you set the key tracking, the synth is smart enough to say, oh, you're playing up higher, we should open up the filter more so that we can get more of those, the, the higher frequencies from, uh, from higher notes. Without key tracking, you're going to hear a really consistent filter sound all the way up the keyboard. Which can be really useful. But if you want something that simulates a little bit more of, for instance, how a piano sounds or, or other keyboard instruments, different synthesizers have slightly different takes on this. But generally speaking, you're looking for keyboard tracking or keyboard. And as we turn this up, I'm going to turn this up to about 50%, you'll hear a little more high end on that top note. Let's crank it all the way up. Another fundamental way to shape your filter and your synth is to use an envelope. And we're going to talk more about envelopes in a future episode, but for now what we're going to do is we're going to use an envelope to open and close the filter over time. Why would we want to do that? Well, in the real world, when you're playing an instrument, like maybe playing a violin or you're playing a trumpet, sounds have a natural decay to them. You, know, you, hit, you hit a drum and it rings out and it usually gets more dull over time. So with an envelope, we want to recreate this idea of the sound getting more dull over time. Now, going back to the frequency analyzer, we can really see that filter sweep happening over time and, and cutting off the high end. It looks like this. And if we increase the resonance, you can really see that peak in your sound emerging and then sweeping down over time. So one more time. The final way that you can shape your filter is with modulation. We're going back to the idea of automating the turning of the filter cutoff knob, but instead of using our hand or instead of using an envelope, we're going to use an LFO or a low frequency oscillator. Another thing that we're going to hit in a future episode, but for now what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to create a smooth pattern of the filter opening and closing. And it sounds like this. Depending on your synthesizer, this idea can become more complex, can become more dynamic and expressive, uh, but generally speaking, if you're playing a fairly static part on your synth, maybe like a sequence bass line or something with a lot of repetition, it can be really, really expressive and really interesting to the ear to set a relatively slow LFO speed. So you just get a kind of subtle movement in the sound. Although most synthesizers are built with roughly the same building blocks, it's really, it's the filter and the specific design and functionality of the filter that is going to give one synthesizer a special character that is unique from another. So this is a Moog, Mini Moog Model D with the classic Moog 24 dB low pass ladder filter. And it sounds like this.
Okay, so here we have a Roland Juno 6 with a 24 dB low pass filter, which is going to cut off the high end, and also adds a high pass filter to the mix, which is going to remove low end from the synth sound. And finally, let's listen to the high pass filter. Okay, so today we took a closer look at filters and how we can use them to shape and give character to our synthesizer sounds. In the next episode, we're going to dive into envelopes and learn more about how to use this very powerful tool, not just to shape your filter, but all aspects of your synth uh, to create dynamics, to create movement, uh, and to fully unlock the power of these wonderful machines.